They had like this little coconut guy That's with a pineapple. Aloha, folks. This is not the breezeway. Welcome back to the Spikes Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Not in the breezeway. We are live from Massachusetts in the Monokai Lounge. This is my buddy Rick's place. Rick from Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. We're gonna be making one of his cocktails here in his incredible home tiki bar. I would love to welcome to the show my buddy Rick. Come on to the show, to your own house. Aloha, everybody. That's Rick. Uh, you wanted to be on this spike? Yeah, oh, we'll do a little okay. shift. Pardon me. This is That's his side. His side of the bar. It's my side. It's, yeah. My, yeah, it's my side of the bed too, but not with him. <laughs> so before we get into the cocktail, you and I have experienced like some of the most incredible estate sales in probably tiki history. Yeah, we've seen some stuff. Like nautical antique stores going out of business and he's from Massachusetts, so he couldn't just load up his truck and yeah, had to had to fit in my bags and. But that was also pretty early in your collecting, um, ish midway. But your collecting has accelerated. Yeah, radically. In just a tad. But your trick is that you were constantly going to local flea markets. Constantly, I don't post the the days when I spend six hours on the road and mm -hmm. come home empty-handed. You know, people always say you find the best stuff. Well, I'm always looking, always looking, and I search in every nook and cranny. And that's the thing that people don't understand when they say that they want to build their own home tiki bar. Where do I go? Where do, how do I buy all this stuff? Everywhere, and it takes years. And it's a constant hunt. Constant. And actually just seeing Rick's stuff and spending the whole day going to, to flea markets and stuff today totally revitalized my passion for the hunt. The hunt. The hunt. What, turning that corner mm -hmm. and seeing the Whitco tiki bar, the Papua New Guinea pieces on the table, the mugs that you've never seen before. It's I yep. put that in hand in your face. <laughs> right in my face. I'm like, <laughs> I'm new to this. I know, me yeah. too. Well, yeah, not really. You well, know, I mean, 100 something episodes. Right. Yeah. No, but I know what you mean. It's hard to explain. So, one of the things that I think is so special about your interest in tiki is that you're very passionate about Boston tiki bars. I think a lot of people like, I like that kind of gravitate towards their whatever yep. was local. I mean, mm -hmm. we had Trader Vic's, Contiki Ports, Bob Lee's Islander. Polynesian Village, we're all long gone before I realized what tiki was. Right. What we have left are basically Polynesian restaurants, family run Polynesian restaurants that brought in tiki themed lamps and decor to increase their business. Mm -hmm. And they're dropping like flies, unfortunately, at this point. They're in we have very few left. Yeah, they're in various states of yes, and demise. Some, <laughs> yes, and some of them have been partially renovated. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they still maintain some of their tiki charm. You know, you see lamps and murals and stuff like that. But. Yeah, and then there are some that are slated for demolition too. Well, there's one in particular. Well, yeah, there's no date yet, so. The great Kowloon. And, and from where I'm standing, I can see your salt and pepper shakers from Kowloon. They did mugs, they did bowls. They did... Yeah, I have a lot of stuff from Kowloon. Is there a particular story in your hunt for tiki that like stands out the most? The, what about your Orchids of Hawaii lamp the story? Five dollar ones? <sighs> yeah. There's a flea market about 45 minutes north of here. People told me it was a good flea market, you should go, and I, I just never went. My wife and kids went away to visit my in-laws on Columbus Day weekend, and I'm like, well, maybe I'll go to that flea market. Mm -hmm. And I found three orchids of Hawaii lamps for $5 a piece. And I was just starting to build down here, and I was worried about clearance, ceiling clearance, and I bought one that was shorter, a tap a lamp, and he, he I didn't walked want, away from the other He didn't want to spend the other five, ten dollars Because I thought I'd hit my head on them, and I got about halfway around the flea market, and a little voice inside my head said, what are you doing? Go back. Mm -hmm. And I went back and he had them behind the table on the grass. I said, oh no, he saved them for somebody. And I said, what's the story with those lamps back there? And he says, oh, they're $5 a piece. I'm like, oh, so they're not sold. So I'm, I paid $5 a piece for three vintage orchids of Hawaii lamps that are like mint. He's, I have eight total now. Yeah. But, and, and actually you were the one who sent me the kind of the instructions, the, the photos of the inside of your shell lamp mm -hmm. so that I could build my own shell lamp. And without without those photos, I probably would have been lost trying to yeah, figure it out. you did a great job. That was really cool. <laughs> Thank you. I was with you when you bought the bucket of shells. Oh, that I used yeah. to build the lamp. Okay, well, why don't we get started making the cocktail? Do you have okay. a name for this cocktail? Uh, the Mysterian. Ooh. Rick is also very much into hot rod stuff. Yeah, so that's a nod to Ed Roth. And for this cocktail, we'll be using limes, mango nectar, pineapple juice, simple syrup, bourgeois, Appleton's signature rum, and Don Q Silver. It's a fairly big drink. There's three ounces of rum in it and 
three juices and two syrups. Okay, uh, well let's get started with uh, cutting the lime in half. Do you want to do that or shall I? It's up to you. Okay. I have my, uh, my father's Marine Corps knife from World War II. Oh, wow. That'll work. Probably needs to be sharpened, but oh, it worked okay. Did you wash that thing? Eh, the alcohol will kill anything that's on it. Huh. Okay, so we start with an ounce of lime juice. I do not have a lime tree in my backyard. Turns out citrus doesn't grow in it doesn't Boston. Doesn't grow well in, or in New England. Yeah. I would say Boston, but it's not Boston. Huh? Eh, 45 minutes. I know, but that's like people calling my house LA. And yeah. it's like, what are you talking about? It's Orange County. It's Orange County. Uh, cranberries do, right? Very well, actually, yeah. I'm working on a Massachusetts Cape Cod based cocktail. I'll let you know when I okay. perfect it. Keep us posted. Because we now have our own Cape Cod rum in both amber and silver. We can't make two cocktails at a time because it's too big. Okay. Why don't we make one and then we can, uh, we'll cut and then we can make another one. And then, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is instructions for one cocktail. One ounce of lime juice. One ounce of simple syrup. and everything else is an ounce and a half. So we start with mango nectar, which may or may not be easy to find where you are. Uh, but Goya is especially good because they don't add sugar or anything. It's yeah, just... and there's a, a very large Brazilian community around here and I'm able to get Goya products fairly easily. So an ounce and a half of mango nectar. Yeah, an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. Shake your juices. Yes, we've learned that over the years. This is a big cocktail, huh? It is. Do you pour it into like a double bucket? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. And now an ounce and a half of Ojot. Yeah, that's a lot of cocktail already. It is, and uh, we haven't put any booze in it yet. And you said there's three ounces of alcohol? Yeah, one and a half of Appleton's Signature. Okay. Oh! Happy with that? <laughs> Ecstatic. Thank you, Appleton, for using a cork. And an ounce and a half of Don Q Silver. Okay. In this small economy bottle. <laughs> and any light Puerto Rican rum will work, right? Sure. Not a whole lot of flavor difference in light Puerto Rican rums, I don't think. Now, I need to get to the ice bucket. I don't have any Sonics nearby. I have a vintage ice crusher that my wife got me for Christmas a couple of years ago that works very well. Fill the tin about halfway with ice. Pour the cocktail in. Pray that it seals. And shake until the tin is frosty. Ooh. Make me nervous there. <laughs> we're good. I think we're frosty. Okay. Hit the tin, not the glass. Because we are in Massachusetts oh. and we spent the day on Cape Cod, mm -hmm. we have Cape Cod double bucket glasses to oh. pour our tropical cocktail in. Man, that looks so good. Garnish with two pineapple chunks and two Luxado cherries per cocktail and a sprig of mint. Is there a reason for the, the two and two? No. Oh. Because <laughs> it, it looks it looks good in the glass. Okay, doesn't good that, story. Doesn't that look lovely? That looks amazing, I love that. Growing season has not really even started, so our mint is not very big. Oh. We do grow mint in the garden, but be warned, it spreads. But you plant it here, next year it's gonna come up here and here. So, but that's good. You can never have too much mint, right? Don't skimp on the mint. Don't skimp the mint. Slap as best we can, put it in the cocktail behind the cherries and the pineapple. There you go. The Mysterium from the Monokai Lounge in tropical southern Massachusetts. Wait, you just did, you did my thing. I'm supposed oh, to do sorry. that. All right. And so, from the Monokai Lounge in tropical Southern Madison. Oh yeah, Sorry. turns yeah. out it's harder than yeah. in, in tropical Southern Massachusetts, this is... The Mysterian. The Mysterian. I mean, I knew what it was. All right. Okay. Why are you so far away? I don't know. You're <laughs> waving my arms yeah. around. Okay, so we're gonna make another one of these things and then uh, off camera, and then we'll have two. Oh, wait, hold on. We're gonna make another one now. Look at that. How did you do that? It's the mystery of the Mysterian. All right, uh, can we try it? That's kind of the objective, isn't it? Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Mysterium. Okay, so immediately it tastes creamy. There's almost no hint of alcohol, which is very scary. There's like a, an interesting flavor thing with the orgeat, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the mango brings like a whole new fresh thing to it that, that you don't usually get 
in tiki drinks. You know, you don't usually see mango show up. One of my favorite drinks is the raised mistake from the tiki tea. And I was told that someone thought there was mango nectar in the raised mistake. So that's really? why I, I basically, I, I based the drink around the mango nectar. Wow. Don't know if that's true or not, but it's it's pretty, the raised mistake is a sweet drink. Yeah. This is this is a great drink, man. It tastes delicious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It tastes like thick, and I think that's from the mango nectar. Yeah, mango nectar is a little thicker than like a pineapple juice. Uh huh. But then the pineapple juice is also there to kind of like help push the flavor profile forward, if you will. Did that mean that didn't mean anything, did it? Push the flavor profile forward. But uh, yeah, super good. Thank nice you. work on this thing. You want to change sides? Well, are we gonna chat about stuff? Yeah. Okay, so as somebody who has explored all of the decaying remaining tiki bars of the area here, what is your actual current favorite tiki bar? That's a good question. Yes. I like all of them for different reasons. Oh, I all like, of them. I like the tiki port on Cape Cod mm. because it's on Cape Cod mm -hmm. and it's it might be the oldest family run, but the Kowloon's been there a long time. Of course, how do you not like Kowloon with the giant A-frame and the big coup? Yeah. In the middle of the A-frame mm -hmm. and the volcano room and the ship room. and The fountains indoors. Sure. And uh, the Mon Ku mm -hmm. that we had dinner at. The food is excellent. The food's great. The decor has taken a... a it, it's taken a bit of a hit. An abrupt left turn into the 90s. Yes. But, but there's still some great masks there. Yeah. Yep. It's great masks and <clears throat> some lamps. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a really cool tiki. Mm -hmm. A couple of really nice murals that are still there from the 70s even mm -hmm. though the topless Wahini is now not no longer topless. Yeah. Because, you know. They painted over a mural. They did a nice job. They did. But. They put clothes on a Wahini. Oh, well. Outside of Massachusetts, what's your favorite tiki bar? Well, it was down the beach, Calmer. Oh, in Sunset Beach. Which was my home away from home whenever I went to Southern California. Mm -hmm. Loved tiki tea. Yeah. Tonga Hut, Tonga Hut Palm Springs, but Dawn's was at the top of my list. I've not made it to Northern California yet, but that has to happen. Yeah, a lot of great tiki bars in, yeah. in Northern California. It is. There's a couple old, a couple new. Where people might have had issues with Dawn the Beachcomber when it was running in Sunset Beach with the cocktails, I think that the Sam Seafood decor and everything that Art Snyder put into the place to really revitalize the Sam Seafood building. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, Art, Art had a real passion for Tiki and a real passion for that building. And Spike and I had a really nice conversation with him about Tiki, about the building, and you know, two days later we lost him. I, I was there on a Monday night and I saw Art flew home Tuesday morning. By the time I got home, he was gone. He had passed overnight. So that yeah. that's I'm getting goosebumps talking about. That was that was a sad sad day. He literally spent millions of dollars trying to make that place something really special and. Um, I wish you could have seen it when it was like really firing on all cylinders with yeah. bands in every room and yeah, it was a special place. Uh, you know, I went there probably more times than I could count and I saw some great shows. I saw more Hula Girls shows there than, than I could count. We and played there over 200 yeah. times, yeah. Crazy. Okay, so there was a thing, we, we went to an estate sale, it was a nautical estate sale in Newport Beach uh, on the Lido Peninsula. And I was like, Rick, you want to go to an estate sale in the morning? And he's like, yeah, I got nothing going on. I was first in line. So, of course, Rick was like... Six, I think, something like yeah, that. Yeah, oh, that's right. Because we didn't want to, like, back. cut or whatever. Yeah. But but you got in right away. Yeah. And it was just nautical and tiki it stuff. Was amazing. But one of the things that we found were these Moai what are you, master pattern... These things. So Oceanic Arts just had a giant auction. And something like this, I don't know, what, $3,000? I they were, I don't know, Th things got out of hand. I understand. <laughs> things got out of I hand. I understand the unique items that were carved by Leroy. Yeah. Most of them, I think, landed in the right hands. Mm -hmm. The things I know, who got them. The $3,700 pufferfish lamp. I think it was a, a lot of 14 mugs, and they were literally like $5 mugs. And that lot of 14 went for $2,000 because they, they spent time in that building. Yeah. And but, I, I honestly don't think I, I ever met two finer gentlemen, to be quite honest with you. They were always so good to me when I was in there. Yeah. Good for them and their families. They deserve every bit of it. So we found some stuff at this estate sale on the Lido Peninsula that was carved by Leroy. I found a necklace mold. A pattern pattern, a master pattern Ew. that they would have, <laughs> thank you, that they would have used to make like surfer charms. 
I guess they would call them. Yeah. So this is one of them that I, I cast this out of resin. Yeah, you, you promised me one of those, by the way. I promised oh, you, did oh, I? A long time ago. So Rick has a real passion for hot rods and customs. So I made a special one for Rick that oh, is... Dude. It's gold metal flake resin. That is so rad. So here you go, dude. Oh, dude, that That's, is... And it's got like... That is so rad. Little sparkly eyes. Very cool. Thank you very much. So I think I'm going to release some of these. I made a bunch of them, and I think that they're going to be for sale in limited numbers on the website. You can go to thehulagirls.bigcartel.com, and you can find them there. So yeah, it looks great against the blue. And a lot of people ask me about this shirt. This is actually... These are the battleships that were at Pearl Harbor. Oh, on a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. And uh, probably my favorite shirt. I guess while we're talking about it, if you are interested in supporting the Breezeway Cocktail Hour, you can join the VIP section of the Patreon for $10 a month. I will send you this Spikes Breezeway Cocktail Hour enamel pin. It's got a ship's wheel. Hey, Rick, that Thank is you very also much. for you. If you are on the show, you get one of those. If you are a member of the Patreon, you get one of those things, so. And it features Larissa's art. Yeah, the murder the queen. The murder queen. The murder queen's pinup art. Except there's no pinups, it's just a No, bar. that's okay. This should be the next t-shirt. Ooh, I like that idea. Okay, so your Tiki Mug collection has grown and expanded rapidly. Yes. And I've got a lot of Tiki Mugs, but I look around and I go, oh, he's playing all the hits. He's got all of the ones. Is there one in particular that is like your one that you like really especially appreciate? You're asking me my favorite? Yeah. Okay. Oh. This one is the Polynesian Pigeon. Polynesian Pigeon? Polynesian Pigeon. Why do they call it that? Um, I guess that's a Polynesian Pigeon on the side. <laughs> it's like a macaw. A macaw. So it makes it well, funny. It makes it a Polynesian Pigeon. From the Mauna Loa in Detroit, which was very short-lived, oh. but very opulent. Mm -hmm. They had all their own mugs uh, that just fantastic designs. I have some salt and pepper shakers from there and another mug. There were too many people taking money out of the drawer right out of the gate, oh. and it, it didn't last very long. There are certain mugs where you go, that's not really a tiki mug, it's not a tiki, I actually, but there's certain ones that you just go, that's really impressive, like it's yeah, really cool. Yeah, it was fairly early on in my collecting, and I these people had a bunch of tiki mugs at a flea market, and I bought a bunch from them, and then went home and found this thing on Tiki Central, and mm -hmm. <laughs> lost my mind that I had left it behind. Oh. And I should have bought it because I liked it. I'm like, this is, but I don't know, it's really tiki, I mean, it's bamboo. Ooh, but there's a bird and then I found out yeah. what it was and where it was from and I was like oh no and I went <laughs> back the next morning it was a you know a weekend flea market mm -hmm. and it was still there and I think it was $15 do you have any idea what it's worth now nah, several hundred. Oh, okay and then what about this guy this one is from Bob Lee's Islander in Boston uh -huh. which was a really well outfitted tiki bar and you might recognize him from Trader Vic's for the most part but for mm -hmm. some reason the Boston guys get bigger ears Oh yeah. I, I don't know why. Big ears on that guy. Um, so the other stuff I grabbed off of your uh, shelf over there is stuff that pertains to Sunday night's meetup at a place called Kowloon. And Kowloon is what? The Tiki Temple of Massachusetts. Yes. It's a giant A-frame. It is striking. And they did all kinds of stuff. They did like this little pineapple guy. They did even like tea glasses. And he actually has like what? Four or five other little tea glasses. Yeah half a dozen somewhere else. Which you just never, I don't ever and I, see. And when I first started collecting, I found them all over the place. And yeah. I, I can't remember the last time I saw one, it's been years. Wow. And then right over there, I can see uh, salt and pepper shakers. Can I grab mm -hmm. those? So he even has like these salt and pepper little Moai guys. Say Kowloon on the back. How many mugs and glassware and things do you think you have from Kowloon? Do you want Did me I find another more, one? Do you want me to grab more Kowloon stuff? Or you, you have more Kowloon stuff? I got at least 20 pieces from Kowloon. 20 pieces from Kowloon? Yes. They put out that much stuff? Yeah. Dude, Kowloon! The, the big tragedy of this whole thing is that Kowloon's going to be knocked down, what, within the year? No, they're saying a couple years. A couple years. But... The kids are inheriting the building. I think it's, I think it's third generation that doesn't want to operate the restaurant, which is very successful today it still is very successful so well, they also know that the property is worth, mi worth millions a fortune. and they said don't worry we're going to build a new kowloon but it's mostly going to be steel and glass which seems like the opposite of a big gorgeous wooden a-frame yeah. with a big carved tiki like can you imagine this place in its heyday there's really only 
one room that had an 80s makeover. Yeah. But there's no vintage lamps anymore, so those were all changed. You know, I could do without the classic rock on the... Oh. Yeah. But I'm so excited. We're going to do a meetup for Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. It'll be way long over by the time we're watching this video. Hopefully, I'll be able to put some video of the meetup in this video. We'll have some cocktails there. We'll be able to, like, celebrate the legacy of a great tiki palace. It really is. Palace is a good word. It's mm -hmm. on Route 1 in Saugus, mm -hmm. which was basically like our Route 66. Oh, right. There was a ship restaurant, a literal ship, Leaning Tower of Pizza, which is a full Leaning Tower. There's wow. a, a mini golf course with a giant orange Tyrannosaurus Rex. Mm -hmm. Hilltop Steakhouse with a giant neon cactus sign and oh. a fleet of fiberglass bulls out front and most and it, of it's gone and it's all going away oh well at least it was able to hang on for as long as it was in southern california like most of that stuff's long gone if you're into tiki stuff you get used to being disappointed because all of the cool stuff eventually goes away even oceanic arts even kowloon <laughs> i hope you enjoyed spike's bum out hour featuring my buddy rick so rick where can they follow you on instagram on instagram at Monokai Lounge, mm -hmm. M-A-U-N-A-K-A-I Lounge. As you develop the Monokai Lounge, what are, what's your intention for, first First of all, half this place is finished. The other half is like in a state of, uh, I don't want to say confusion. Dis confusion. <laughs> it's in a state of building. And this part looks incredible. That side of the room was meant to be like a hot rod kind of thing. And then this side was supposed to be the tiki bar, but your collection is expanded and multiplied. Yeah, tiki will take over your life. He even has like this incredible tiger print Whitco bar, like one of the most desirable ones, like something out of a cramps video. So what are your plans for the walls, for the ceilings? Well, the ceiling is gonna be the same as it is on this side. Burlap over the studs and then the fishnet, which I bought 50 pounds of fishnet. Mm -hmm. I don't like new or reproduction anything if I, if I don't have to. Yeah. So it's legit fishnet. It does smell fishy. It does. And I fill it with shells and floats. And mm -hmm. This is Massachusetts, this Cape Cod. And a lot of nautical supply yeah. stores, nautical antique stores, yeah. There was absolutely be a taste of Cape Cod in here. Mm -hmm. Favorite place on earth. I have a special affinity for our greatest generation, mm -hmm. the, the World War II generation. My parents were of it. My dad joined the Marines at 16 years old and was training for the invasion of Japan when the war ended. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a tribute to the Pacific Theater mm -hmm. over there, which is really where Tiki came from. Those guys came back from the South Pacific. The good memories they brought with them were the tropical islands and the, the people. Yeah, I have carvings and trench art and coconuts and photo albums. I, my fo One of my photo albums was, was featured in Sven Tiki's Tiki Pop. Mm -hmm. So I have a pretty good tribute to the Pacific Theater over there. It's gonna be more nautical over there. So what about the wall treatments and um, stuff? I have various wall treatments. I have lahala matting, I have tapa cloth, I have seagrass matting, I have bamboo flats. I, I'm using some old wooden shelving to recreate like a ship's hull on the wall over there. So that's where I'm headed. So I think once you're finished with that whole stage, you're gonna have to send me some photos and then we will do a little bit of a follow-up and uh, well, you'll have to come back here. It's really far away. Yeah, I come to you all the time. Not all the time. Eh, more times than you've come to me. Well, I think I'm, I'm kind of buzzed from this thing. It's, it's kind of a lot of ounces of rum. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of alcohol in this. You guys should try this thing at home. Let me know in the comments below if you make this thing what you think, and uh, let Rick know what you think. And of course, it was it was named after the Orbitron. No, big Mysterian. So this said, the Mysterian. From Ed Big, Ed Big Daddy Roth. Ed Big Daddy Roth, the rat fink guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. what I'm talking about. So folks, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and we will see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha. 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 Goodbye. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>
You're safe. For now. I don't know if I have. Check. Ready to go? Yeah. Uh, but. So, uh, oh, oh, we'll have to do that. We'll have to do that again. Uh, um, wait, which side? Was I on the other side? Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Are we done? No, we're not done. Oh. But I was going to put a big horseshoe crab right there. A horseshoe crab? Current favorite tiki, tiki bar. Wait, let me say that again. Outside of Massachusetts, um, outside of Massachusetts, oh my God. If you've never out. seen Kowloon or you don't know where it is, just just Google Kowloon Saugus Mass. Oh, I'm gonna put the and, pictures in. Oh, okay. 